Hello, this is Tim and we're back on the rapid road to improvement playing uh, rapid games on Lee Chess. Just waiting for our game to pop up. Okay, here we go. So we're playing Hansen 555 and he's rated 1978, so a few points higher than me playing the Scandinavian once again. We played a Scandinavian game pretty recently, I think. So we're going to get that immediate tempo on the queen on d5, and then we push d4, bishop f5. So we can play bishop d3 here to challenge the bishop immediately, but since the bishop's decided to go to the square, that means black loses a tempo if it goes bishop g4, so I think we can play knight f3 here as a response to this bishop f5. We get knight f6 from black we could think about bishop g5 to attack that knight bishop e2 also makes sense bishop b5 would force c6 that's an interesting idea to play bishop b5 to force c6 the question is that in, is that in my favor or black's favor i think it's in my favor because it means that black probably doesn't develop the knight to c6 so okay so that's taking the c6 square and then we can move the bishop either to c4 or to d3 to challenge the bishop f5. So that's a decision. Um, it's a decent bishop on f5. It's one of black's most active pieces. So it wouldn't, I don't think it would be a big mistake to think about challenging that. I think we're going to do that. The other option is bishop c4 and trying to get a quick knight e5 uh, or knight g5 to attack the f6. But I think, I think black wants to play e6 anyway. So let's play bishop d3. We'll pre-move that recapture because we know we're going to recapture. And then he does move the bishop twice. So the question is whether there's any way to exploit that. Uh, well, first of all, let's just try and work out whether bishop takes knight is a threat. Bishop takes knight, queen takes, and then queen takes d4. It may be a threat. So let's respond by playing bishop e3. And now we have this. Now we may need to play at some point bishop back to e2, but I don't think that's going to be a major problem. So I'm, my plan is just to get castled here. We could also gain a tempo on the bishop first. Um, ask that where it wants to go. I think that makes some sense. Play h3, then follow up with castles short. And another idea for me is to play knight e4. And then play bishop, bishop e4 to protect the knight that way. But I think we'll get castled first of all. That also means black can't play bishop b4, pinning my knight c3. He also can't play c5 or e5. Both of those lose a pawn. So bishop d6. Now we've got this idea of knight e4 winning a tempo on the bishop d6. Um, and that means that I think white may want to recapture. He's done that. We've got this position. Okay, so the queen looks like she wants to come out to d6 as a battery on here. We can now though move. We can move our queen out of the pin. That's one option. So let's just look at that. Queen d3, queen d6, threatening bishop takes f3, and then mate on h2. That's certainly nothing great. But the other alternative is queen d3. Um, if queen d6 immediately, we have knight here. Then let's look at f6. Okay, that's possible. That's possible. Okay, so let's try and think this through now. We've got the issue that the queen is coming to d6, and we we don't really, although this is, you know, with all that said, we can probably plus just play g3 there. I think we can play g3, because if black has to give up his bishop to, so we see the threat here, but I think just g3 is fine here. Um, because the other option is knight e5. So we, we have to choose between g3 and knight e5. Knight e5, what happens on f6? If the knight moves, there's a mate, and otherwise maybe it's being attacked. We can't attack the queen in the, mi in, in the meantime. Um, 
Although, yeah. So I think maybe just... Do we have a problem with f5? Is that the, if we play g3? Are we are we having a problem with f5? G4 is possible as well, but it's a bit loosening. Knight h4 is also possible. Knight h4 is also possible. It's not really what I wanted. And we're spending a long time in this position. So my concern, if, if g3, I'm concerned about f5, hitting the bishop that's doing the job of protecting the knight. If we took that and, took, and played queen takes, um, we would have given up that piece. We're hitting the bishop. So then after bishop takes, queen takes... But that's, again, a problem for me. So maybe maybe we have to play here knight h4. This doesn't look quite right here. Definitely, I feel like I've messed this up. Um, like I've messed this up here. All right, let's go with knight h4. Oh, knight h4 just made him one. For some reason, I thought that this knight was looking at this square, but just queen take queen h2 mate is weird. What a strange move to play. Well, that's the first game I've lost for five or six games. <clears throat> I don't know why he doesn't play the mate. Um, he must be torturing me. Uh, I'm going to pause while he thinks about this. Uh, he's replied, not a good move. You can't see that in the chat. But um, we're going to wait. Okay, there's our there's our checkmate. So we'll just pause there. So this is a, a it's a good example of the sort of chess blindness that I think we all fall prey to sometimes, where your mind is trying to deal with various uh, things sim simultaneously, and you sort of you find yourself panicking a bit. Um, and then you end up playing a move which is completely illogical. If we just go back here, we just bring up the analysis board um, to, let's say, this position. We understand what the threat is. The threat is to take the knight and then play checkmate. So we start thinking about, well, how do I remove that threat? Uh, so one thought is, OK, we can we can either block this or we can block this diagonal. So we, we so. Knight e5 and g3 are both connected with the idea of blocking the diagonal. They make sense. But then your, your mind says, well, hang on, if I simply move that knight to this square, then the knight can't be taken, and then I don't have to worry about the threat of taking the knight and mating on h2, forgetting that moving the knight is the same as losing the knight. Um, so these are the kind of sort of strange illo illogical errors that creep in. We'll just see if we can find a solution to this position here. I'm assuming that this position is is definitely not you know lost for white. But let's just think a bit. So let's let's start with g3. <clears throat> now my concern was if g3 f5. What we're now doing is attacking this bishop, and if the bishop, I mean the bishop has no moves in any event, so. At this point, the threat is to just simply take this take this bishop. It's trapped. What else could we do that? Well, let's. I mean, it doesn't look great. Let, if we if we look at bishop f five, e takes f five. I mean, or even simply bishop takes f three. This is simpler, and we've just lost a piece basically for a pawn. So that's no good. So I don't see a different alternative. Let's just think. You could play g four in here to try and. Temporized, but I think black simply says, that's fine, I'll move my bishop back now, job done. I oh, know this wouldn't work, actually. You'd have to play bishop g6 here. Then after g takes f, you can play e takes f. Uh, but then we're playing this. So this is possible. Let's just have a look at this. So after g4, maybe uh, black can just ignore this and simply play f takes e because it's getting gaining a tempo on the queen. After queen takes e4, we have bishop g6, and once again, black emerges the piece up. So I think 
we're we're right that g3 can't be played here if we can't play g3 what else do we play here what else do we play um so the other option is knight e5 so the problem with knight e5 or the problem as it seemed to me with knight e5 is f6 so what do we have here um well we can gain a tempo by playing g4 and now the idea would be that after the bishop moves, we can bring the knight safely back to do its job of guarding the h2. So what could we do about that? Well, black could play here this move. After knight takes to remove the knight from the attack of the f6 pawn, h5, once again, if the knight moves, there's mate on h2. And... We have bishop g6 check, king e7, and what do we have there? f4 looks like the only move. Um, I can't see any other way of protecting the square. So f4 takes, takes. And this is probably okay for white. Not great, but probably okay. Um, pawns are equal. I think black's maybe better here, but not by much. Let's just have a look. Yeah, black is a little better in this line. So let's go back now to the position where um, black has played queen d6 in the point where I blundered knight h4. Let's just see if, if we've already made a fairly big mistake. So white's better here. All right, well, this is very interesting because it looks like g3 is playable, despite what I thought. It didn't feel to me like black was a lot better. And it's also saying knight e5 is possible. And in both of these lines, white is better here. So I spent a long time thinking about my possibilities here and then played an illogical move, which was knight h4. And we've seen how that loses. But let's just try and understand why g3 is playable and not just playable, but good for white. So th the idea is knight f5. This is the, the move that we looked at. And it, it's saying white can take this. And now my move I wanted to play was bishop takes f3. So why is bishop takes f3 not good for black? We have bishop f4. Okay, that gains a tempo on the queen. The queen needs to stay on the bishop. So why not now, for example, something like, ah, okay, this is the issue. By playing bishop e4, we've opened up queen takes f3. So let's say a simple move like queen e7. We can then we can then play. Um, we can play. I mean, it's it's giving a rook a e1 to do with the connection with the pin. But even something simple like bishop takes c7 is is still comfortably better. Well, they're not much better actually because that allows ef. Uh, let's see what ef doesn't win. Why does this not win the queen? Ah, because black has bishop here. So let's go back. So we have to be precise here. Rook a1 immediately, it's saying, with both the threat of take capturing the bishop and playing rook, e, rook takes e6. So that's the main threat. Bishop here to protect that. c4. And now black's going to lose something so bishop takes f4 cd and now after cd you you've got to get a castle otherwise your, your queen gets pinned to your king now we play check don't see why we can't play king h8 here well, there's all sorts of strange moves here i mean this the bishop's going to move with tempo oh this is lovely if king h8 bishop g8 which threatens mate on h7 and releases the attack of the rook on e7. So that's why bishop uh, rook f7. But if you've got to play rook f7, then white's just winning because we're pawns up and we're winning the exchange as well. So that's very interesting. Lots lots of stuff there. Um, complicated position. Let's just go back then quickly and check the opening and see if we made any obvious error earlier. Okay, so this is the ma the position we reached, and bishop. This is where Black played Bishop F five, and you can see it's not a common move. It's only been played in a couple of games, um, and the, the the suggested move by the engine is G four to try and punish that. What did we actually play here? Knight F three. 
knight f6 played. Now it wants to jump in with knight e5. Man with bishop b5 check. c6 played. Bishop d3 was played. It was the, it was the right move to play. Then he gave up that tempo with uh, bishop g4. And now it wants to play an immediate knight e4. So again, that move of mine was sort of in the right lines. Before I played that, I played bishop e3, which is a little bit less accurate, but still good for black. e6 h3 doesn't seem to be a mistake so much bishop h5 and now it wants to get castle for white or queen e2 it's castle so still good here bishop uh, when sort of in, in new territory more or less here um bishop d6 now it wants to pin the knight g5 which makes sense to me knight e4 takes takes bishop c7 to get this battery and now it's looking at c3 rookie one bishop d3 all of those moves queen d3 is a mistake queen d3 runs into an immediate f5 so that's i didn't even consider that i was merely thinking about trying to remove the pin on the queen and i had completely not thought about it so i think that's clear that this is a mistake it's it's not a losing mistake it seems like there are enough tactics in white's favor that this can be played but not seeing that f5 is possible is is quite a big error and then we've we saw this position white can play g3 or knight e5 um let's look at knight e5 quickly just to see why that's also tactically possible so we said why not here f6 that was the move we were worried about and it looks like White is saying, look, just play f4. The computer's saying, play f4. And if f takes e5, f takes e5, hits the queen, and white has enough of an attack here to be worth a piece. So let's just understand why that is. Let's play the best move for black, queen d7. We win the h7 pawn. We've already won. Um, we have already, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven versus five we already had two points for the two pawns for the piece sorry and black's black's king is in trouble we've got stuff like bishop g6 queen g6 coming in um if i mean if black's having to play king d8 here that's obviously not great let's see what happens if black plays a quote unquote normal move here like knight a6 is there already just a winning blow here yeah there's a winning blow with bishop g6 check takes Queen takes check. You can't put the queen in the way. If, if you play rook here, you can see rook f7 wins the queen. So here, rook f7 anyway. The queen must come here, I think. And then af1, and then just everything is falling apart. Very interesting. I mean, I, I'm sure I wouldn't have seen all that. Anyway. Uh, some chess blindness there, our first loss since we started making these videos, but not to worry. Thank you for watching. We'll be back with more rapid games soon.